Hey, everyone. Day eight of our Daniel Fast 2024. I'm here with James Cannon. Hi, James. Hello. And, uh, and Yenny Cannon. You Hi. Guys, you guys have heard from Yenny so far, but not James. And so I wanted to uh, capture James's heart as it pertains to Jesus and prayer and breakthrough in the kingdom. So first of all, James, just a little bit about yourself. Just, you know, like your, uh, when did you meet Jesus? And yeah. When did you meet Jesus in your life? When did I meet Jesus? Oh, okay. I wasn't ready for this. Um, okay, sorry. When I, when I met Jesus, I was six years old in, in San Francisco on, on a holiday with my family. Beautiful. Yeah. And you come from, tell them your background, your nationality background, because it's super interesting. Um, well, my, <laughs> my, 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 I'm half Indian and half German and something else. So it's, that's a mixture, but that's, that's kind of the gist of it. As far as I know, I'm adopted, was adopted by a Christian family from when I was, it was a been processed from when I was six to 12. So, yeah, yeah. no, Native American. Memory. His mom was full Native American, so his his uncle is like danced in the ceremonies in the 1984 Olympics, representing the Takino tribe of of the American Indians That's in 1984 so... Olympics in Los Angeles. I love it, and he's got pictures of his family on his mom's side, and they're just beautiful people. I mean, just amazing. Okay, so fast forward, you and I get connected way back in the was it the 20 it was uh 2000 uh the end of the, the beginning of 2006 yeah 2006 we get we through a mutual friend we meet and he says you, you i just love this guy you need to meet him so james comes to kansas city lives in our convent in the discipleship house we get to know each other i could see his heart immediately and god has me inspires me to call rollin baker and, and connect James with Rollin and Heidi Baker and Iris Ministries. So then give a, give a synopsis of what happened then. Well, I went to, went to Iris Ministries and, uh, and we, the, the policy of Iris Ministries is very critical is they, they, they're very, they're very protective of the ministry because they've had a lot of issues. So you come for three weeks, you come, you go home, you, you, uh, you, you sleep in your bed, Rollin says, sleep in your bed. You know, um, drive your cars, talk to your pastor, you know, talk to your parents. And then then you need to know that you 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 were supposed to be here because a lot of people get wounded because yeah. they don't belong here. They, right. And so it so happened there was some some difficulties there with with the weather and a lot of problems with with uh, flooding. And Roland Baker asked me to not go home to stay long term. And he says, we never have done this, but we believe you're supposed to be here. He said, I'm not telling you God said, but all I know is I know you're supposed to be here. You have a heart for the people. And we'd like to ask you to come long term now instead of going home. And uh, that started started my journey of being with Iris Ministries for six years um, until God told us to move across the border, um, right across the border, which is Swaziland, to another ministry there called Challenge Ministries, and we were there for another five years and until God said, it's time to go home. Yeah. And that was one of the toughest moves of our life was to leave Africa. So, And and so we went back um, and until the Lord said, it's time to go to Laramie. And so here we are. That's the real short version. That's the real uh, short version. Now, the two of you met and fell in love as two missionaries out of the blue. You weren't counting on that. James... Ooh. You got a big stinking kiss from heaven when you moved to Africa. He yeah. Gave you a yenny. I mean, come on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. Okay. So enough of that. We won't get into the romantic story. Maybe that's another time. So, uh, but it's, it's exciting to hear. So they're, they're, they've upped and moved to Laramie and they're helping with this, um, this, attempt to see Christianity become, you know, New Testament with the combination of the word, the spirit, and then this relational piece that we, we, we transform together while we bond and connect and we get emotionally and relationally 
mature and healed from family. So they're here for that. Now, uh, we're fighting for breakthrough in your lives, and we want you to pray for breakthrough in every area of life, including work. So James got here. They rented this great house, uh, moved everything there, and Daddy just got a job. So tell them about your job and how Jesus, how you're praying for the kingdom to come at work, you know, and how you're integrating this fast time into your work. What What is it that you do? And um, how's, how are you bringing Jesus? Well, I think, first of all, the man that I worked for um, uh, was introduced to me uh, via just text um, by PV when, when it goes to the Rock Laramie. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I hadn't heard from the guy after I got here. And, and I knew the Lord told me just to be patient, just to wait, just to wait. And I'm not a I'm not a waiting guy when I when I know it's time to, to get <laughs> engaged. I, I like to get engaged in. And so the Lord really uh, helped me to be to be patient, and it was difficult um, in, in a certain aspects because I'm a, I'm a go getter. But um, so I waited, and this man of I think two months later finally calls me and asked me if we could meet, and and he said when he says how about tonight? I said sure. So he came over, sat on my couch, and we talked, and and he says oh, I understand you have a Class A CDL, and he says we really need that. So to move heavy equipment and to drive a semi truck, you you have to have a Class A. So so he hired me. I started working with this guy and, and he, he, it's just, it, it, it evolved into, he needs help. He's got a lot of breakdowns with his equipment. Um, and I just said, well, I, I said, I'm not a mechanic, but I, I said, I can do quite a bit of stuff. And so through the breakdowns, we started connecting and, uh, and, and he's the man's supposed to be a Christian. I asked him one day and I said to him, I said, I understand you're a Christian. He goes, yeah. I said, so, you know, Jesus, he goes, yeah. So I said, okay. So I said, through all these breakdowns, I said, I said, I think we need to start praying over our equipment. And he kind of glances at me. We're driving for about 45 minutes to the job site. And he goes, yeah. And I said, <laughs> okay. he goes, okay. He says, and he's thinking, I know he's thinking, who is this guy? And, uh, but so the door opened up there and I just proceeded to talk about, about, uh, you know, why we do what we do, both of us in our lives and mm -hmm. where he comes from and, and and a week later, he's really started opening up, and 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 I and I know a level of transparency is is what makes people more comfortable because they're you're sharing, you know, personal things in your life. So the man started opening up and yeah. telling me about his kids and his family and his dad, and and uh, and I said, so we should just pray. So I just prayed over the equipment, real simple, and and uh, we had we continued to have a lot of serious breakdowns. I mean, stuff that's really crippling us. Um, because of the cold, we need we need to thaw out the ground, and this specific specific machine, it's a thawing machine, it just keeps giving us issues. And we've taken it to a mechanic, we take it back out, it breaks down again. And so I just stand there, I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, we pray for favor, Lord, and wisdom to how to fix this. What do we do? And uh, just trying to be just natural, um, because for me that is very natural. And 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 I just turned to the man, I said, you know what? I said it could be worse. And he looks at me like what? You know, he didn't say anything, but I mean, he's a very humble guy and he's a great guy. He's just, he just says, because it can, he goes, yeah, I could. And I just said, so I said, we'll just pray that we just, you know, make the right decisions. And, and we have a guy that we work with there. That's extremely difficult. He doesn't, he can't communicate, but he chooses not to. Um, and, and I have to work <laughs> with the guy every day. And, and I've, and I've had guys since I came back to the States from, from Europe and, and Africa, um, that were the same way. So, so my boss says, so, so when you ask this gentleman that we work with, he goes, what did he say? He goes, he just kind of goes, no, nah. and, and, nah. and he goes, he goes, so he Sounds says, like a Wyoming man. <laughs> he said, he's, he said, he's not married. He's got two dogs, um, really nice dogs. So, but uh, <laughs> he, he's a good guy. He's really got something. I told my boss, I said, you know what? I said, we all need Jesus. We, he just doesn't know it yet. And I just said, I said, we all need relationship. That's what we're created for. So he says, well, you know, I thank you for working with this guy. And and I just said, he goes, so how do you, what do you think? And I just said, I pray every day for the guy throughout the day. Because okay. every this time I got to deal with him, every time I have to deal with him. And I said, I've been here before. I've done this before. And I just said, Jesus always prevails. And I just said, it's difficult. I said, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a relational guy, but to be able to do my job, I need him to communicate with me is very difficult.
So I just said, I just keep praying all the time. I said, we need the Holy Spirit to come and give us favor. I said, because it's there, there, there's nothing else you can do. And, and I said, so he goes, wow. He goes, a lot of people have butted heads with this man. And I just said, well, I said, you just got to keep praying. I said, we just keep praying. I oh, said, love so, this. But I said, we, so I, and I said, <laughs> that's how what I do. And I just said, we're, we're going to get through it. I said, I said, we need relationship. And I said, God sends people. This was just on yesterday. I said, God sends people into our lives to help us. And I know this is where I'm supposed to be. And he, and he, he looks at me and he says, thanks for coming to work for me. And I just said, I just know this is where I'm supposed to be. And I said, until God sends me somewhere else, this is where we're, we got each other. And I said, I'm here to help you. And I said, I said, this is what we're supposed to do. Oh. And I said, this is what I'm here to do. And I said, I'm here. I'm here to help you. So, uh, so y'all catch in the heart of this. So James is full of Jesus. He, he gets up very early and prays. I know that because Jenny told me. So James is a very secret prayer life. And so he's all marinated in the presence of the Lord. He's praying, he's worshiping God, he's in the word. And then as the skin of Jesus at a really rough and tumble job, I mean, we're talking about heavy, big equipment, tires bigger than a man, and we're and earth moving equipment, excavating equipment, hardcore people. And James is bringing Jesus in the middle of this rough and tumble world. And I, I personally told him, I said, I think that the Lord allowed some of these breakdowns to showcase your talent and your ability and your servant heart. And it's giving you favor with this boss, this company owner. And it's, it's actually catapulting you in favor in the whole city. Cause this guy has a favor in the city and he's got a lot of friends that have favor in the city. And the Lord wants to showcase Jesus in you, James, and you've come in low and slow. You've done that with a church. You've come in. I just want to be a servant. And but you bring that intercessory prophetic inter prophetic meaning. You hear God's voice and you unleash it. You hear God's voice and you unleash it. And so, James, I'm going to just ask that you would the 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 mantle that's on you to bring the kingdom in practical areas, to solve practical problems, but doing it relationally. You have this amazing ability to connect relationships with solving practical problems. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it with, with anybody. And so would you pray a grace on, on our tribe for breakthrough in this? Because first of all, everybody's got practical problems. I mean, pipes freeze, money doesn't come in. We all have practical problems and we all have relational problems. <laughs> so putting relational and practical together with Jesus in the middle, would you pray for breakthrough in the people watching and those, you know, that they're in, that they influence. Go ahead and just bust a prayer open over us, man. Yes. Our, our dear heavenly father, we, we, before everything and anything, we want to be thankful Lord. And life is tough for everybody and anybody. It doesn't matter how much money you have and how much you don't. We all know that money makes it easier for things, but it doesn't solve the problems. Mm. I pray I pray is what's in my heart. And as I told my boss, I'm either in or out. I'm committed. I'm a hundred. I'm either in or out and I'm in. And I say that I came here to be a part of the ministry at Rock Laramie. And I said, I'm in there and I'm, I'm all hundred percent here with you. I and I, I, so I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we would be transparent enough to know that we are willing to open ourselves enough. So people can feel comfortable enough, Lord, to be, to be themselves. Um, we pray for commitment in, in the rock tribe of people that we be committed to whatever we're doing. We'd commit ourselves, Lord, as we hear your voice and we're led by your spirit, that we would be committed to one another, Lord, first of all, you and then one another. So we can be able to be unleashed, to be who we're supposed to be in this kingdom, that your kingdom would come, Lord, and that we would walk faithfully as we hear your voice and your word, Lord God. We just need more of you, Lord Jesus, to realize that that it can always be worse. And things are tough, Lord Jesus, that we would look at not what's well, not what's not been done, but look at what you have been done. And then we can find joy in what you've done and, and the things around us. And then we can engage in the things that are that have not been accomplished yet. And we pray in your precious name, Lord Jesus, for the people, 
people in this rock tribe, Lord, and anybody else that listens, Lord, that we would we would we would connect with the people around us. Relationship is what you created us for, Lord Jesus. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. James, that was fantastic. Now listen, you know, all of us can carry Jesus. Well, we actually do carry Jesus wherever we go. It's just a matter of are we aware and are we intentional? And I just love how intentional you are about this, James. And you're not you're not a religious goofball either. You're not using cliches, you know, brother, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? I don't, you know, none of that. <laughs> you know, your your language is down to earth. It's, 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 it's approachable. It's real. You have a humility about you and you just, you're just present with the Lord and the love of God and you're ready to serve. I think the serving piece with a relational heart, you're not just a servant without a relational heart. You're a relational being with a servant's heart. And I just, you just bring Jesus wherever you go, both you two. So thank you so much for being role models for me and the rest of our tribe and those of, and those that are, you know, being influenced by you. So you guys, please stay warm. We're everybody. We're in 16 below zero weather. And it, on the, with a windshield, it's below 30, <laughs> below zero, 30 below. So you better, better stay warm. No frostbite. Okay, James. Thank you. I will work on that. Uh, okay. Love you guys. Say hi, say goodbye, everybody. See you all later. Bye. Bye bye.